Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Dr. Sharp from National School of Theology. We're getting ready to get started with our class right now. And so let's go into a word of prayer. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for the month of the blessings you have bestowed upon us. That God, as we go into the class, God allows us to go into your word. God allows us to discover their God, the revelations, and illuminates, allow us to come to understanding and comprehension. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Tonight's mm -hmm. class is not going to be long. I'm not feeling my best, so just keep me in prayer. Um, so... Uh, I want to um, get right into um, chapter six. We'll deal with, um, yeah, we want to go into chapter six. I want to go right there for right now. The context principle. Okay. Um, what you're getting ready to get into is how I've got, what you're, what you're getting ready to get into is um, a teaching uh, of principles that is meant to help you, again, to, if these principles are applied, you can interpret any scriptures in the world. I'm going to do the very first one. Go over that with you. This is the context principle. Okay, and it reads as that, so we're not going to be using... Um, nothing but our books tonight. So on page 51, it says the definition of the context principle, the principle by which the interpretation of any verse is determined upon, upon a consideration of this text. Now, I clearly need you to look at the definition and there are certain key words uh, that, that stands out. That, hold on, let's see. It says that the interpretation is determined upon consideration of its context, okay? It means just to consider. If you're considering considering it, it does not necessarily mean that you have to flow with it or go with it. You just have to consider it. Now, if you go to chapter 7, which is on page 55, just flip to that real quick. It says, use the similar words. It says the interpretation is aided by considering. Okay. Go to chapter, um, chapter eight. It's a little bit different. It's talking about comparing and contrasting. I want you to go to chapter nine. And you'll see the word consider. Most of these principles have to be considered. When it comes down to, you can keep on going through all of it. One, you'll find the most of them use that word consider. I just wanted to bring that out. Now, but as you study hermeneutics, my, um, what I will hope is that, let me, my hope is that you might say, well, there's 12, 13, 14, 15 various principles that we need to consider. Once you study these, um, my hope is that your consideration aspect would take place in many seconds. Okay, so that it's not like you got to oh, think of this. You know, your spirit man is going to go through these principles quickly. So, but I've got to get you to eat them, digest these considerations, study them this week. But the first one I'm going over with you is very simple. And you see that says that you have to just consider what is the context. It says, uh, the application, it says the word context is composed of two Latin words, meaning con, meaning together, and Texas meaning woven. In other words, woven together. In other words, what it's saying, I'm, and, and, in plain terms, excuse me if I'm talking, look, my throat is kind of sore tonight, and um, so I want to get this done before I lose my voice. What we're, we're here is saying is that in order to understand the scripture, many times you have to take one scripture and woo it or connect it with another in order to understand it. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. We all do that all the time. Most of the time, you cannot take one scripture all by itself and say, oh, well, the Bible says so and so. You have to allow scripture to be connected with scripture in order for you to be sure that your interpretation is right. So, so that's scripture connecting with scripture. We'll get back to that. But look what the first highlight says, fresh revelation context. Let me read what it says, and this is crucial. And you want to highlight this. The writers of scripture here were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write thoughts that was previously unknown. You need to highlight the word unknown, that they prophets, they many times That's prophesied. Page is that on? The same page. 51, 51. 51. Uh huh. So here you're looking at fresh revelation as nothing more than writing. The, hold on, I'm going to change something. I'm looking at everybody. I'm looking at medicine. I'm looking at everything. Hold on. Uh, hold on, man. I'm trying to try get my just a speaker thing on here so I can just. I can't get it. <laughs> okay. Um, so here. You're looking at fresh revelation as God given something to the prophet or the writer that has not been spoken yet. That has that is fresh. It's brand new. So therefore, more than likely, again, this writer had no idea what they was writing. They were trusting God in what they were saying. They had no clue, more than likely, what God was talking about. All they knew that what was important to them, that God was talking. In order to get this level of revelation, to be able to preach and teach God's word and hear fresh revelation, you have to understand the context principle. You need to know God's word in order in order to allow God to use you to minister. Because I talk about it all the time. I don't use a whole lot of notes. That's because when you learn God's word, when you learn a certain percentage of God's word, God's the anointing will take scriptures that's embedded in your soul and bring them together and give you fresh revelation and make you go wow yourself. You're just as much excited as the people are because you're getting something fresh that you didn't see before yourself. But the Holy Spirit is doing that. That's fresh revelation. Now, if you don't got your sermon off of sermon.com, sermon.net, and you done went on YouTube and copied somebody's message, that, that that's not fresh revelation. Copies other people's sermons is not fresh revelation. Fresh revelation is God giving something previously to you, not necessarily the audience, but to you as a preacher, especially that you did not know. This take a dependency uh, 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 in faith of trusting God. This is, again, a dependency on knowing God's word. Fresh revelation, speaking that. That has not been spoken before. Now, what he does here, still there. He gives us various scriptures that was where we can find evidence of that. Jeremiah 31, 34. We don't have time to go over all that. Ephesians 2 and 11. I think we discussed this before where it said uh, when we were talking about the revelations. Remember, it says that God hid from the Jews about the bringing in of the Gentiles. He kept that that was a mystery to them. They did not know about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but next one is woven revelation. Woven revelation is when God give you two scriptures that you already know, everybody know, and put them together to give you revelation or to confirm something else. So, so we got fresh revelation, which is something that the writer more likely did not know, and woven revelation. The writer understood it, but he used other scriptures to bring enlightenment for other people. Any questions, comments, or statements? Mm. Okay, I need you to go down on the same page where it says one of the oldest and most, look, look down where it starts off, use the word one, one of the oldest and most high regard adages of Hermeneus is scripture interpret scripture. Highlight that. Because that's all this page is talking about is that scripture interprets scripture, not the pastor, not the pope, not no one. God's word interprets itself. 
So I highlight that. Now, down to A, all the way at the bottom, it says the whole of the context. The context of any uh, specific verse is the whole of the scripture. No one should look at this. This all this needs to be highlighted. No one, no one verse should be used on its own. Stop right there. No one. I said that a while ago. No one verse. If you quoted something, you still need to, if you possibly can, try to connect it. No one verse should be on its own from its relationship from the body of the whole. So therefore, you just go grab something from somewhere else and try to throw it and try to bring it somewhere else. You, we can't do that. The phrase scripture interpret scripture means that the best interpreter of the scripture is the scripture. Okay, so I want to go to chapter seven. I'm done teaching. Now, um, how many of those on the master's level? Okay. Sister Paulette, I want you to write down chapter seven. Sister Julie, you have chapter eight. We don't have. Let me see who else is all oh, here. The 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 the, the chief of council. No, I'm sure. No, I'm sure. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Mr. O'Brien. Okay, you got. You have chapter nine. I'm gonna tell you what we're doing. This is gonna be highly interesting. Okay. Um. So seven, eight, and nine is going to be taught by our masters and doctoral students. Okay, now, but that's not nothing at all right now. But this is, um, we're going to use these principles. Based on the context principle itself, you can interpret most scriptures. Okay, but there are a lot of teachings. That I need that I'm gonna uh, you need to write down speaking in tongues. Write down number one, speaking in tongues. Number two, prayer hours. Prayer hours. H O U R S. Yes. Okay. Yeah, like three o'clock. Yeah, some oh. believe in the, that that pray around the three o'clock hour, the twelve o'clock hour. You know, the midnight hour. God's gonna do it. You know, I think it's nature. Okay, ties. These are all teachings that you're going to use these principles to interpret. Now, these you're not going to do all of these principles, I mean, all of these subjects at all. Everybody's not going to do all of them. I'm just going to have a few of you do them. Hold on for a minute. Um, okay. Um, we have 13. That I mean, we have 10. Okay, so we got 10. We should have at least two people on every topic. Okay, let's say, for instance, and this is how you're going to have to write your paper. I don't believe that you have to speak in tongues. I don't believe in that there's a, a prayer hour that you have to pray. I don't believe in tongues. I don't believe in fasting. Your job as, uh, as a... Um, Interpret, interpretator, a leader of God's word, and some of you have already had apologetics, so you're adding apologetics to hermeneutics. Now you're going to defend the faith, if you can, that's if you can, when it comes down to these subjects. Okay, everybody with me so far? Now, but not all of these subjects, I'm going to give uh, everybody. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split some of these subjects up. There's going to be at least, hold on a minute, a little Are we still in chapter seven? No, we're. I'm just talking to you right now, hon. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, did you write down? Did you write down those topics that I asked you to write down speaking in tongues? Yeah. 
for speak our, in our, tongues, our, right, prayer okay. hours. Okay, and she time. got it. Okay, so now, okay, let me go back to these subjects. This, uh, I'm looking at 13 people on here, probably less than that, probably about nine. I need two people to do the research on speaking in tongues and using these principles. Ne oh, I'm letting somebody in, excuse me. Okay, I need you to defend. And if you can't defend it, I need you to come back and tell me why. I need the paper done by next Tuesday at the latest. Okay, so who are the two people that want to take tongues? Because there are there, now. Let me let me go. Let me just elaborate because you got the, you got the uh, audio, so you can want to listen to this. There are those that says that uh, um, speaking in tongues is the main sign of having the Holy Ghost. So you either for it or you're against it. I need you to use scripture to support scripture in order to, to show me whether that's a yay or no. Okay? I, I don't want to hear nobody's opinion. That's why we got bought this book. This book is telling us about principles. It's telling us the best interpreter of the scripture is the scripture. That's the first principle is telling us this. You haven't got to chapter 7. But in order to defend, defend what you believe, Everybody's going to have to probably at least go through and skim chapter 7, 8, 9, and 10. It's simple to do. I, I just showed you how long did it take me to pick out a few things in chapter 6. It took me less than five minutes to get the gist of it. All you need to do is go to chapter 7 and get the gist. The first mention principle. Let me go ahead and do it real quick. That means if you're researching a subject, you go to the first place it's mentioned. Boom. Done. That, that's the gist of it. I mean, that's, that's a little team more to it, but that's the gist of the first mention principle. Now, if you're going to study any subject, you, you need to go to the first place it's mentioned, but you don't stop there. Go to chapter eight. Dr. Short. Yes. I am volunteering myself, <clears throat> Sister okay. Benning. Okay. Okay. Hold on for a second. Okay. Chapter eight, comparative mention. That's comparing scripture with scripture. A lot of these titles are self-explaining. Uh, uh, so you're not going to be all week reading nine chapters. You, it's going to take you one day to go through all these chapters. Not even, excuse me, not even one day. A few, just a couple of hours, a few hours to go through these principles. But these principles are crucial. You need to, they're crucial. When you're done going through these principles that before, now my master students are going to come back next week. And they're going to go in debt on this stuff. They're going to break it down a lot deeper than your associates people. Your associates people are going to go, go to it and get the gist of it. They're doing more than getting the gist. They're going to give you examples. They're going to give you examples. Okay? But after they've done, done their teaching, then we're coming back to my associate students. And so, uh, Sister Benning's got, so does anybody else um, want to do tongues? That Dr. Short, this is Apostle Feaster. I'll take it on. Okay. So my two Buffalo people, okay. I had to, Dr. Short, I had also um, asked for speaking in tongues. I didn't know if you heard it. Yeah, I did too. You asked for it? Yeah. <laughs> I, can, oh, no, no, no. I can also do the prayer hours. I have those already <laughs> in, okay, in you, the you, file. You, okay, so the Bennings, so the Bennings take the prayer hours. Mr. Okay. Julie, no, you already have a topic that you have to teach on. I'll take I don't want to, th this is that. just for this is just for associate students, no, associates okay. and bachelors, associates okay. and bachelor students. Okay. So okay, so let me do this again. Speaking in tongues is gonna. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, so see. so that was apostle. Apostle said that she would take. Am I correct, Apostle? You said that you were going to take the tongues? Yes, sir. Apostle Richard. Okay. So you got that. Um, Bennings, you got, uh, you said you want to do the prayer hours, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh huh. And who else you want to do the tongues? Uh, was that you, Pastor? I had said I will do it. I thought that was for the master's student, though. No, 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 no. You say that's for associates, right? I'll do it. Yeah. I'll you know what? I didn't give you um a chapter did a um 
No, you're supposed to be doing. So you have chapter 10, the complete mention principle. Pastor okay. Betty. Okay. I'm writing it in my book. So there's no way I cannot know who got what. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So again, who else wants speaking in time? I'll take it. I'll Who's take the, it. Who, I will take okay. the speaking the in time. No, I can okay, pass. The, the Doris got it. Okay, I got her name first. Okay. Okay, but a chief apostle, you can take, you can take, uh, we still have prayer hours, tithe, and fasting. I'll do fasting. I'll take one of them, Dr. Short. Okay, which one? This one. Prayer hours is left. Nobody took tithes so far. I'll take tithes. Who said that? Ivory. Okay, um, Minister. Okay. Now, um, who have I missed? Is there anybody that don't have something? I don't um, have anything. Who's that? That's all I, okay, and okay. I don't have anything either. Okay, cool. Okay, I got you too. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Latoya, let's do the prayer hour. And remember what I'm saying about prayer hour. There are some that believe that there's certain hours of the day, you know, that God, he'll meet you in the midnight hour. We, we preach a lot of these things. You know, preachers just say, but they're not teachers, so they'll say almost anything. But there are people that still teach this. I I reached out to a uh, a woman that God was with, actually a student, um, and I asked where did they get the book on these prayer hours, and they re they wouldn't they didn't respond back. I didn't know what I was doing. I want to know. Well, that was my thought. Okay, but I could be wrong. I just asked for the book. Okay, about the prayer hours. So I got you down. Um, okay, and Benick and Latoya. Okay, okay, and. I uh, said, so Charlene, you can do tithe. You hear me, Sister Charlene? Can she, I know her. Yes, sir, she, I got you. Okay. Yes, sir, I heard you. Okay. And I defend I mean, or, or, or not, right? Yeah, you can defend or oppose. You can, whatever you find out the truth to be. Okay. Okay, now let me share okay. this with you. Um, now, some of you have already had apologetics with defending the faith. Now, that was a professor. He did the same thing you guys did. He took the subject, is there a God? He went out, and after all his research, he came back and with the belief that there is a God. He accepted Christ as his personal Savior. So I'm saying to you, your research will be so important that somebody can read your research and get blessed off of it and said, thank you, I did not know. Somebody, it could be life changing. I want you to write with the spirit, write in the spirit. Pray about what you're writing. This is important. These are teachings that's out there. Now, I do want to ask one other thing. You have a list of four things. Is there a fifth topic that someone said, Dr. Short, I would like to hear this topic researched? I have one. Yes. Um, people being slain in the spirit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank. I only have three. What was the fourth one? Okay, speaking in tongues, prayer hours, tithing, tithes, and fasting. Okay. Now the next one, number five, is slain in the spirit. Does anybody want to take slain in this room? You think you can handle two? No, okay, <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. 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 Now, um, so pretty much that's your homework assignment, but please don't get it in no later than um next Tuesday, please. No later than that. I love if you can get it to me by Saturday, Saturday. I have all day to just look at papers. 
Uh, but I, but again, take this serious. When what your research should again should be like a research paper. Most some of you didn't have that uh, that class already doing your research. So make sure that you cite your sources. I need to know where you got your information from. And please just don't go to uh, uh, got questions and cheat like that and go with them. They could be wrong. Don't don't do like that, please. Break down, you know, um, why this is the answer. Go through the process. Don't cheat yourself. Because if you, you can easily do that, and guess what? When it comes time to God to use you, God can't use you all. He can use you the website you went to. <laughs> you want right. God to use you. Right. Okay, is there any yeah. Now, Short, I got a little lost as to what everyone is doing. Now, when yes. you say my name on chapter seven, am I only doing something in regards to the first mention principle? Okay, and, and the chap and chapter seven and all the, and everybody else, when it comes down to chapter your chapters that you have. Not you're reading it, but you're gonna come up with examples that you can't don't use the examples that's there. You're gonna teach this. You, mainly, you're gonna teach it. I need you to be to teach this to the uh, those that are on the other levels that's below you, and just break it down. So more likely, you're gonna come up with examples, or you can use those examples here. But you need to be to break it down. I just went through and just done a quick, bam. All right, it took me five seconds to do it, because the definition pretty much gives you fifty percent of of what it's all about. To consider the first mentioned principle. But guess what? Every word is not in the book of Genesis. Some words only come out in the book of Revelation. There are certain words that's only mentioned one or two times. So the Dr. first Short. mentioned principle will not work on every our, every study subject. Yes, yeah, somebody said something. I did. I just wanted to make certain of the topic that I had because I'm missed something in there as far as the topic went. There was a couple other conversations going on. Okay. I have I have you down for tithe. Okay. So there was That's speaking all. in tongues, prayer hours, tithes, fasting. But you're not do, but you're not doing you're not doing Oh that. I know but I'm 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 still taking yeah. notes uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. like page. So there were five things listed in that group. Right, five things listed. Uh huh. I need to know that you not only are you starting those principles, that you know how to use those principles. That's what we need to get out of this. Okay, so is, is there any last question, comments, or statement? Because you can get started right now. You still have a half an hour to go in this class. Okay, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I will post this. Oh, no, 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 and... Dr. Short. No. Okay, okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sister Betty. I apologize. I was slow on the button. Um, okay. <laughs> I wanted to go over the questions that we we did, um, the, the 10 second uh, questions that you asked a couple of weeks ago um, about. Was uh, Mary Magdalene promiscuous? We have to um, go to video one on that. But video one, but those are, you were just asking, um, which video gives the answers? Did you look at... With, we, didn't cover, we didn't cover that in two? No. Um, okay, let me get back with you on that, because... It was in it was in week one. We did. Yeah, it had to be. Week, well, we're only in week three now. Yes. And, yeah. and what was and what was the question? Yeah, there were five questions you asked us that we had ten seconds to answer just off the top of our head. Um, does it say in the Bible that you hate? Yeah, it wasn't a homework assignment, right? No, no, no. no questions and, and you gave us the question and we put the answers in the chat. Yeah, the first one was, was Jesus born in a born or a stable? You stable said true. Or, or yeah. yeah, but didn't we discuss that and give the answer? 
we did we did go over that. I don't okay. I must have been somewhere else. I apologize. Yeah, well, um, I don't, I, yeah, look at it again because I think funny. we went over those. Hold, hold on just for a second. Hold on. Let me pull something up. Um you know, I, it's not gonna pull up. I was gonna hold on just for a second. I'm gonna try to go to my PowerPoint real quick. Uh, uh let me stop here. I have, I have them all. Okay, hermeneutics week one. Let me see here. Yeah, um, do do do. Come on here, Atlanta. Come on here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let me see here. Was Jesus born in the manger? If while you're looking for it, can she? Um, give us the questions again so that I can have them okay, written it's in, down. It's in front of you. Okay, thank you. In a barn or a stable? Born in a barn or a stable? I put manger. I'll just take a picture. Okay. Yeah, that's a good I idea. Think the question was, was it true or yeah. father? Uh, that's right. Was it? Was uh, it and we, yeah, false? we did discuss that. Uh, the word Trinity is it found in the Bible? True or false? No, Where it's, it's no. not. Mary Magdalene, was she promiscuous? No. They said she was, but she wasn't. She wasn't. I can love the sinner, but hate the sin. Is it in the Bible? No. No. No was mocked by the people for building the ark. No. No, he, no. he wasn't. And then we went on the seven daily sins, yeah. Okay, I remember us talking about... Okay, I got it. Okay. I got it. I apologize. No That's it was really good discussion around that. You might want to go back and look at week one because I need it too as well. We have okay. some good discussion around that. Yeah, there's a around lot of information on that one. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. So I'm look, I am excited, looking for um, our teaching because a lot of people follow National School of Theology. They follow us. So I need you to do your research paper and um, you never know what we might do with it. So we, I'm quite sure we're going to bless a lot of people with what you guys come up with. Okay? So uh, God bless you. May have a smile upon you. And we'll see you all next week. Next Monday, Lord's will. God bless you, everyone. Bye-bye. God bless you. Good night. God bless, God bless you. Bye. Bye.